Welcome everybody to Monster Hunter Rise Dual Blade Switch Skills. I am the Seventh Sword, and now it's time. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about specifically switch skills for the dual blades. Now, every single weapon does have three additional skills you can learn throughout the game, and you can swap them out at any time, even while on the hunt at the tent. For Demon Flurry Rush, you can replace it with Demon Flight. For Demon Mode, you can replace it with Feral Demon Mode, and Piercing Bind, which is the Wirebug skill, you can replace it with another Wirebug skill called Tower Vault. So we're going to get into every single one of these skills, including the originals, and what they're good for, and what they're not good for, and how to best effectively use them, as well as how to learn them in case you don't know how to go about getting them. All right, so really quickly, this guy right over here, Kakashi Sensei, is from Master Utsushi. He's going to be the one that teaches you all of the uh, skills at some point. However, you're going you're to unlock them in different ways. Once you get to your village key quests, about, I'd say, in between three and four, you'll see a notification to go talk to him, and he'll just grant you one new switch skill for every single weapon in the game. That's the only time you're going to get them all at the same exact time. Later on, once you get to hub at least, I think, four, once you get to high rank in the hub, you start unlocking personal quests for each specific weapon, and he'll, he'll again grant those to you. Four, five, and six, so you'll unlock them in tiers. The final way you unlock uh, switch skills is you actually have to go to the blacksmith, and you'll get it by regularly making weapons of that type. So if you want, if you want to learn the dual blade switch skill, you gotta make some more dual blades. Now, in my experience, once I've made about like four or five lower rank ones, like a couple rarity twos, a couple rarity threes, things like that, it procced me to go talk to Kakashi Sensei and he taught me the skill for the weapon that I just crafted. So there's some sort of invisible algorithm here that's tracking your progress as to how many dual blades, how many long swords you're making, the quality and all that stuff. But it doesn't take that long, it doesn't take that many materials. So don't worry about it. It's not like you have to make the rarest weapon in the game. You just have to make a few of them, and you have to make different ones. You can't just keep making the same dual blades over and over again. You have to actually make a variety. It won't. I don't think it'll count if you just keep making the Kamara one over and over and over and over again, for example. All right, it's time to discuss the switch skills themselves. But very, very, very quickly, I'm going to discuss Demon Mode. Demon Mode is vital to the dual blades, and pretty much everything revolves around it. It is all about building the Arch Demon Gauge, and it's all about going in and out of Demon Mode at the right moments to execute all of your attacks properly. Because as you can see, in Demon Mode, you take a completely different stance, your character is going all Super Saiyan, so something important is happening here. When you're out of Demon Mode, you're just like this. You're like, I'm, like, I'm just a guy with two swords, I'm just running around, I got two swords. But then you go into Demon Mode and everything changes. Your stance becomes more, you know, you're, you're, you're more aggressive looking. See, look at him. Look at how aggressive he looks. You're ready to take on the world in demon mode. But, there's a lot of things to understand. There's a lot of stuff actually going around here. So, in your standard demon mode 1, your movement speed is increased. You run much, much faster, as you can see. Which is really nice. 2. Your dodge is actually different. So this is your dodge outside of demon mode. This is your dodge in demon mode. You got like a bloodborne dodge going on there. It's pretty sweet. But as you can see, your stamina drains very, very quickly because you have that constant stamina drain happening to you. One other thing about demon mode is you actually have access to a whole different set of attacks when you transform into it. So this is your standard X combo. This is your X combo in demon mode. And when you exit demon mode after an attack, you also follow up with an attack. It's really nice. It's a nice change. Also in demon mode, you gain access to a special, special attack called the demon dance. When you hit X and A together, the difference is here is that when I'm doing this attack, the normal, the normal X combo, I can dodge. I can dodge out of it. I need to. Once you initiate a blade dance, you are committed. You are not going anywhere. 
It's a very, very powerful move, but it has dire consequences. If you pull it off at the wrong moment, the monster is going to punish you, or you're just going to miss and look like an idiot, which a lot of us dual blade builds seem to, you know, we all do it once. We all do it ever, at least once, if not more. We do it. We, it, it happens. It, it sucks, but it happens. You, you can prevent this just from never using it until the monster is down on the ground. But let's be honest, it's really cool when you pull it off at the right time and the monster's all like going crazy and you break all the parts. But anyway, I digress. You can also transform into demon mode while in midair, which is really nice, especially in this game with all the free-flowing motion. The demon mode also grants access to the backspin attack, which is really, really good. It does a lot of damage, especially against large monsters. And as you can see, you can actually pull it off by transforming in the air off of a wire bug attack. Now there is a switch skill that makes that much, much easier to do, but you do not need it. You can be sheathed, do your wire bug, transform, and as long as you time it right, you can pull it off whenever you want to, but it's going to require a lot more nuance than the move I will show you in just a little bit. The final aspect of demon mode that I wanted to go over before getting into the other skills is arc demon mode. Arc Demon Mode is obtained by filling up that gauge underneath the stamina bar to be red. You fill it up by actually successfully landing hits while in Demon Mode. Now the gauge is red. So what this means is I have access to a whole different set of attacks while outside of Demon Mode. You retain the dodge, for example. You have a, well, it's not exactly the same, but it's a very similar dodge, and you actually do have some of the same exact dodges. But every single action that you would be able to do within demon mode expends that meter up there. As you see, I dodge, it goes down. It's also slowly draining on its own as well. So you have to use it wisely. But you could transform right back into demon mode to fill it back up before it expends. So you can retain your arc demon mode. If you let it go all the way down, you have to fill it all the way back up from white again, which will take more time. And limit your options during the fight. You also get your own unique XA combo in arc demon mode called Demon Flurry. There's actually three parts to it. And the difference is you can actually dodge in between the parts. So I don't want to go to step two, I can dodge out of it. So it gives you more to work with. You're not completely committed to finishing the entire combo like you are in demon mode. Now that I've explained that much about demon mode, I can actually get into the other skill that I want to talk about, and it's called Demon Flurry Rush. Demon Flurry Rush is one of the skills you start off with in the game, just like demon mode, and it's only initially usable while in demon mode. You press A, and you do a spin to win kind of attack. You can dodge out of it, you can combo from it, you can combo out of it. You can do lots of really, really cool attacks. It's very useful against fast monsters. It's, just, it's not particularly great against monsters that are in the air a lot as they have to be on the ground. But it's really good for keeping up with the monster, getting out of there while also still attacking. But if you have your arc demon gauge filled up, you can also use demon flurry rush. This is why it's very important to constantly be switching in and out of demon mode to keep that gauge filled. Make sure you're keeping an eye on your stamina. And you can basically keep the attacks going all day. The last skill I want to talk about that you start with initially when you pick up the game is Piercing Bind. Piercing Bind is a wire bug attack. As you can see, it expended a wire bug gauge down there. What you do is you stab the monster with a giant kunai. And every attack you do to the monster also does damage with the kunai until it explodes. The more damage you pile on before the explosion, the more the explosion will be. It is very, very effective against weak points not so much when you stab the monster in the back. Because you bounce off, and you're not going to be able to do as much. And then it just kind of... Yeah, it does 36. It's better than nothing. But you get my point. You really, really want to make sure you go for the weak points. Now, the positives to this move is that it can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Negatives? It's got a very short range. 
you're gonna miss and then you're out of luck and you gotta get out of there so you're gonna have to look for the opportune moment to use it such as when a monster has been knocked down or when a monster is in a trap or when a monster is paralyzed even when a monster is roaring if you have earplugs or you dodge through the monsters roar you can then stab it in the face and you get some free hits in and you get some massive damage so it's good to take with you when you know the monsters attacks when you know, when you can predict its movements so that you can use it at the best time now we're actually going to get into swapping the skills themselves demon flurry rush can be traded for demon flight demon flight is also a skill that initially is only usable while in demon mode except now when you press a instead of doing your slingshot attack you're going to vault off of the monster and you can use that to do the backspin attack that I showed earlier. The bigger the monster, I think the more effective it is because there's more surface area to hit when you're doing that initial hit up. The cool thing about this one too is that it has an arc demon mode variant as well. You do not do a backspin, but you just instead come down and you do the finisher slash. Which, if you do it right, you can get a lot of hits in as well. If you miss this attack, you just slam on the ground. You will not do the jump unless you actually hit the monster. The next switch skill I'm going to show replaces demon mode with feral demon mode. Feral demon mode is probably my favorite thing in the game right now. It is really incredible, it is very fun to use, and I'm having a blast with it. In regular demon mode, as I showed earlier, your character just puts their hands up in the air and they're ready to go. In feral demon mode, you actually attack while you transform. Your stance is different, you're even more aggressive than before, as you can see. But you are slower, you do not run as fast as you did in regular demon mode. But the trade-off is, now your dodge is also an attack. This works very, very well for Demon Flight because you actually don't have to go into that backspin. You can come back down and just keep the attack going. It's super smooth. It, it allows for some really nice combo potential and when you get out of dodge, you're also attacking. And just like regular Demon Mode, you can transform in the air, except now you'll also attack when you transform in the air as well, which is very nice. Now the final skill that I'm going to show you is Tower Vault. This is the one that can actually help you get a lot more backspin attacks outside of Demon Flight. Just like I showed earlier how you could use a wire bug to get a backspin attack, this one's going to make it much, much easier because you can use Tower Vault while your weapons are drawn, including while in Demon Mode. This is also a wire bug ability. It replaces Piercing Bind but it gives you that maneuverability while your weapon is drawn to then attack the monster. It makes it much, much easier to pull off those backspin attacks. However, you're giving up Piercing Bind, which can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. I would definitely recommend Tower Vault when you're fighting monsters that are big and fast so that you can actually maintain your maneuverability around the field and still be able to attack at a moment's notice. Now, when you are outside of Demon Mode in Arc Demon Mode, you actually get that finisher attack from Demon Flight. And you can zoom at the monster. It's, it's a good gap closer, and it's very, very useful. Not only that, but you can also use it as a dodge. If the monster is doing some sort of crazy attack, you can get out of there by dodging it in the air, and then set yourself up for a nice counter attack. Another cool thing about it is that it's actually chainable. You can do it twice, as long as you have the wire bugs for it, to get yourself in a better position to strike if your initial jump was not the best. It also has a very fast recharge time, so by the time you're on the ground you can almost do it again. And if you have two going, you can basically always be doing it. Very quickly, I just wanted to showcase what I pretty much bring to every single hunt currently. And right now what I bring is Demon Flurry Rush, Feral Demon Mode, and Piercing Bind. Now, like I mentioned before, you run slower in Feral Demon Mode. However, 
If you have evade extender, your evade is much, 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 much farther now. And that mitigates the speed that you've lost. It allows you to follow the monster and stay right with them. You basically feel like a Narga Kuga. It's fantastic. But it is very stamina heavy. So, I'm going to be making a build with dual blades that also mitigates that. I haven't gotten everything that I wanted, but I do have a pathway that I'm going to be going towards. And I'm going to be talking about that in a completely different video. But, I wanted to thank everybody for coming out. Hopefully, if you enjoyed dual blades, you learned something new today, or at least enjoyed the video. And if so, please make sure to keep coming back because we're going to keep posting them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.